Okay, now we've got our quick quiz questions. First question. How many days did the children of Israel travel for before they ran out of water? That's the first one. Number two. They arrived at the waters of Mara. What does this word Mara mean? Question three. What choice do we have when things go wrong? We can do one thing or the other. What are the two things? Okay, and now I'm going to give you the answers because I realized last week we never even gave you the answers. So the answers are, number one, how many days? It was three days before they ran out of water. Number two, the word Mara means bitter or bitterness. And number three, what choice do we have when things are difficult? We can either complain and moan and groan or we can pray and cry out to God. I hope you got them all right. Good morning, Flame. Are you sitting comfortably? At the end of this talk, there's going to be a mini quiz. So listen well and see if you can get all the answers. I wonder if you've ever seen pictures which have other pictures hidden inside them. When we used to meet at the school, person to person, all together, we sometimes had pictures like this. We'd have a picture perhaps of a house and in the picture would be four fish hiding. So they're not obvious. You had to really look hard to find them. Many Old Testament stories are like this. They're about things that happened, but hidden in the story, there's a little glimpse of Jesus. Our story today is like that. It's about events that really happened to the Israelites, but if you look carefully, there's a pointer to Jesus who came hundreds of years later on. In our story, the Israelites have got to the desert. Now you know, not much grows in the desert and there is very little water. The people were hungry and they grumbled. We don't like it here. Why did you bring us here? It was much nicer before in Egypt. We had lots of food. This is terrible. We're all going to starve to death. Who were these people who were grumbling again? These were the same people who had seen God move the waters of the Red Sea so that they were like walls and the people could walk through. These people had seen those enemies who were chasing them drown when the waters came down on top of them. They had seen how powerful God was. These people had seen the bitter waters turn sweet. God did it. God was kind to them to give them water to drink. But they still grumbled. They wanted to go back to Egypt. Had they forgotten what it was like in Egypt? In Egypt, the Bible says, they groaned in their slavery. In Egypt, their slave masters oppressed them and made them work very hard. In Egypt, some of their baby boys had been thrown into the river Nile and drowned. Surely they didn't want to go back to Egypt. In spite of their grumbling, God was kind to them. He said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven. The people are to go out each day and to gather enough for each day. Then on the sixth day, they must gather twice as much to have enough for the seventh day. So when they got up the next morning, there was dew on the ground. As it went away, it left thin flakes like frost. The people had never seen anything like it before. What is it, they asked. This is the bread that God is giving you, Moses said. Take as much as you need for you and your families. They did this and they all had enough, but not too much. Moses told them not to keep any for the next day because the next day God was going to give them some more. But not everybody listened and some kept some. In the morning, it was full of maggots and smelly, 
move. Each morning, everybody got as much as they needed. When the sun grew hot, it melted, so they couldn't stay in bed and get some in the afternoon. On the sixth day, do you remember what God had said? On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much, so that the seventh day could be a day of rest. This time, they had to keep some overnight. This time, it did not go bad or smelly. People who'd not saved some went out on that seventh morning but they found nothing. They discovered that they needed to obey the Lord every day. It was better for them that way. For some of them, it took a long time to work this out. And some of us are like that too. The Israelites called the bread manna, which means, what is it? It tasted like wafers made with honey. The manna continued day after day, week after week, month after month. Every day for 40 years, God provided this manna until they came to the promised land. 40 years. How long is 40 years? Well, you might have a mum or a dad or an auntie or an uncle who are about 40 years old. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. 40 years is a long time. What a kind God they had. Hundreds of years later, Jesus spoke about this story. He said, I am the bread of life. The Israelites ate manna in the desert, but they still died. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. This is strange, isn't it? Jesus is bread. Those who heard it didn't get it either. It doesn't make any sense, they said. Have we got to eat him? Even the disciples were confused. Back to the Israelites for a moment. Moses said to them, God humbled you and made you hungry and then fed you with manna to teach you that a person does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We need food. It gives us strength and makes us healthy. And we enjoy our food too, don't we? But we also need the words that come from God's mouth, the Bible. Food feeds our bodies. The word of God feeds our souls, our hearts, the part inside us that relates to God. As we read the Bible, listen to the Bible, think about the Bible, we are feeding that other part of us. So let's talk about the Bible, ask about the Bible, sing about it, pray about it, and the Holy Spirit will help us. Yesterday morning I was having a walk before breakfast. I was thinking about this talk and about food. I'd walked quite a long way, so I was hungry. Earlier, I'd asked God to help me, and he spoke to me. And he said this. Lick the bowl. And I thought, yes, lick the bowl. Do you ever do that? You've got your favourite food in front of you and you want to eat it all. And when you've eaten it all, you scrape the bowl, make sure you get everything. And then you have a look and think, well, maybe there's a bit left. I need to, I need to lick it. God wants us to take his word and get everything we can out of it to feed ourselves, to feed ourselves on Jesus. So we're going to ask God to do that. We might have a little thought or a verse or a song. And if we take it and think about it and pray about it and talk about it, God will help us and he will feed us with that word. And so that word will become part of us. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you that you provided manna for the Israelites in the desert. And we want to thank you 
that you provide your word, you provide Jesus for us to feed on. Lord, help us to take your word, to think about it, read it, pray it, sing it. Lord, that it might become part of us. Holy Spirit, help us to do this. Help us to make this real in our lives. Amen. And now the quiz. You don't need to write these down, so you don't need to find anything. You just need to call the answers out because we're not all together, so it's fine. Okay. So here's the first question. In today's story, what did God do for the Israelites? Number two, how long did God provide manna for? And the third one, this is the last one, it's only a mini quiz. When Jesus spoke about this story, he talked about himself. What did he say? He said, I am the something of something. I am the of two words. Okay, here come the answers. Number one, what did God do for the Israelites? He provided them bread to eat every day, manna. Two, how long did God provide the manna for? Every day for 40 years. And number three, when Jesus talked about this, he called himself, he said, I am the bread of life. Did you get all of those? If you did, give yourself a pat on the back. Well done.